that is what it do. I know, boo boo. But what if uh Yogi? That is what it do. It's time to Oh my god, he's see he's seizing. Welcome to the first ever crapshoot review featuring your host JD, me, and my friend and co-host. Hi. James. I call him James. Other people call him Jimmy. What are we reviewing today, we, James? We are reviewing a uh, webcomic that I introduced to you in one of the Crapshoot podcast episodes a while ago. Yes. Called Scoob and Shag. Scoob and it Shag. It is a webtoon comic that I discovered from uh, a meme of Scooby-Doo saying, Sweet Rocking Reams. Yes. And... Um, and I'd always thought that was very funny, and I saw that there were other ones of that, and so I checked it out, and little did I know is that it was not just the meme, it was a fully enveloped story. It was a full webcomic by the infamous Mystery Crew, spelled M-I-S-T-E-R-I-E-K-R-E-W, and it it currently has like 114 chapters. Yeah, the newest one was literally uploaded like last month. As of today. Um, I read. Today. No, it wasn't Apple last month. I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, yeah, maybe it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, I read the whole thing about a week and a half ago. I finished it a week and a half ago, and now we've gotten around to reviewing it. So, I guess we'll just we'll just get right into it, huh? Just get right, get right, get right in so there. I'm gonna leave the plot. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to be well, there's going to be spoilers for Scoob and spoilers Shag. For Scoob. Spoilers for Scoob and Shag the webcomic. So if you don't want spoilers, you should go read it. It's I'll put I'll put like a link to the webtoons thing in the description. But anyway, let's just start with something that isn't so spoiling. Um the art. How do you feel about the art, James? Um I think the art is very deceiving <laughs> for the artist's talents. At first, it's, At first, it's, it's ex- charmingly extreme. bad, right? And, and I say bad, but like, if if you were to tell me to draw it on that level of quality, I probably couldn't. So it's still okay, but I'd say it's amateurish. Like an amateur artist could probably draw something like that, right? It's and, and it's, it's, like it's good enough that it's you, like, yeah, it's funny. If you asked a artist to draw Scooby and Shag from memory without like giving them an actual reference, that's what this it, is that probably what you get. Like. Mm-hmm. And then you drew them both cross-eyed. Okay, so at first it's like, it's like what the heck is happening, right? There's not much right. going on, uh, or I guess it's just like one of those comics that are like, it's 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 like two pa- panels long. It's a setup for a joke, and then the punchline on the the end of the right. Page. So it's it's like a blue chair or like any of those type of artists that you see pop up now yeah. and then and everything. They've always got like funny skits and everything. It's like a uh, cyanide and happiness and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like one of the comics like that one of do those. have like no actual connection. Mm-hmm. They're just a bunch of little skits and bits using the same type of characters. So it's like that up until the chapter where he gets um. Well, I guess we're gonna go into spoiler territory now. So we're done with the art. Let's move on to the plot. In quotations, plot. Um, it is like that up until I, chapter. Yeah, up until the fourteen. Yeah, so basically, he gets a he gets Scoob has like a gun, right? <laughs> As this, this is this is how I interpreted it. So he gets a gun, and then the cops get onto him because he has a gun. I don't know what he used. I forgot what he used it for that to get the cops onto him. Probably just shot a dude or something. But they get he gets the cops on him. So he, they him and Sh- and Shag hop into the mystery van. They hijack it and they uh, was it they crash it into a tree. And this is like where the story begins, apparently. <laughs> right. In the moment that the crash happens, the story actually begins. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the art is just the same level of quality uh, right. right now. And so they crash into the tree. Um, they get out. They like go through the forest because they're running away from the cops. And they meet Kermit my boy the Kermit frog. the Frog. <laughs> and Kermit oh, the Frog no. is smoking a fat joint. And he's like, "Yo, you want to smoke some? You want to you want to dabble in the devil's lettuce a little bit with me in the abandoned house over there?" So there's an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere, and they go into the house, and this is like the art style just like changes. 
a yeah, it's bit. like in this chapter, or well, not this chapter, but like in the next two, in the next uh, like ten or so chapters, ten fifteen chapters, <laughs> it like slowly the, changes the art from like this this kind of like um, really uh, lightly drawn like lead pencil type ish art to like right. this filled in like just full on dark black ink type of art. And it also changes from like a comedy to like a, a horror ish. Yeah, it, it becomes it's, it's somewhat horror. like horror like. Yeah. And um, in the house, they meet um, they meet my boy Mickey, Mickey Mickey Mouse, I think, right? After shooting Mario. After oh right, they see Mario and they shoot Mario, and then they meet Mickey Mouse. On chapter twenty. 20- Five exactly yes. is the moment they meet Mickey Mouse and where the art changes from that type of like a style mm-hmm. to something that's like almost somewhat lifelike. Like the uh, I think it's the right in the moment they met they meet Mickey right is when the, the right art changes. It's literally the moment he first appears. Yeah, like he's seen so, vaguely in the background and then he appears fully on his own panel. Yeah, I'm gonna be putting our pictures itself. in this in this review because it's gonna be shorter. So yeah, they they meet Mickey. And then they, um, I guess they just keep exploring the house. Yeah, they're, they're trying to find the house. They, they got split up from Shag yeah. and they're trying to find him and everything. Yeah, they're trying to find Shag because they got split up. And, and Shag, Shag meets Goofy. Yes, Shag meets Goofy. And then they both walk into this room that has a bunch of like containers in it. And then all of a sudden Goofy starts, starts acting a little bit weird. He's like, Mr. Stark, I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> Mr. Shag, I'm not feeling so good. And he, he like straight up like transforms into this monster looking thing, and it's uh it's pretty horrifying. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. The the panels get longer after the this. Panels point do too. get longer. Yeah. They they go longer. from like just a couple panels to now like eight or even more. Mm-hmm. You'll see that as as uh, the series goes on, it gets longer and longer. And um, yeah, I think and then Shag he like runs right. He runs away from this monster type thing. Right, and he gets he his arm caught, and I'm pretty sure he has to get his arm gets chopped off, right? Right, his arm gets caught in the door and gets cut off. Uh huh. So now, now Shag just doesn't have an arm, and then when he wakes up, he's in like this base full of cartoon characters. I'm gonna be skipping right. ahead of. I'm gonna be skipping ahead to like ma- major. Plot I'm trying to keep so it with you when I'm skipping ahead. Too. I'm like, yeah, we're okay, trying to keep it. We're trying to keep it as short as possible here. So he gets into this base of cartoon characters, and Yogi um, Bear, Popeye. Yeah, yeah, all those kinds of cartoon oh, characters. Oh, style changes here again. Like yeah. the moment Shaggy opens his eyes, the art style for him does change specifically and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, he just looks a lot different than he did in like the previous panels. Yeah. Okay. So they they're in this base. And I'm I I seem to forget what the why they're in the well I know why they're in the base but I don't know what they're trying to do, so they're they're in they're this they're trying base. to get their ship started up and everything. Oh right, so so yeah, they're trying to get like this place up and running, and um, they're they're fighting against like another band of cartoon characters, like a rebel right. group sort of. Well, they're the rebel. Yeah, they're they're, they're the rebel group, like the oppressive group essentially, which is like Yosemite Sam and a. Uh, Bugs Bunny, Jesus Bugs Christ! Bunny. Yeah. So yeah, they they're they're walking around and they um they train Shag, I guess, and they, or they test Shag, and then they by beating the shit out of him. Pretty much, yeah. And then they set off on this mission to try and get this place up and running, and then they get like cornered by um Bugs Bunny. Right. And they um. They oh, so by the way, fight. they have superpowers. We didn't explain that part. It's. Pretty I think that we, yeah, I guess, yeah, they have, so they all have superpowers. All these cartoon characters have superpowers. I forget what they call it. What they call uh, superpowers? Bollyhoo. Bollyhoo. That's right. And it's basically like, um, it's like a quirk from My Hero Academia. Every, right. That's, every that's cartoon character has their own sort of, sort of power. So, um, I'm pretty sure Yogi Bear, his power is like, um, if he sees something, he, can't get hit by it or something like that i forgot what it was exactly no popeye is that uh his that's what his is he can like uh he can go frame by frame and can like dodge oh, so he can like slow down time basically that's what popeye's uh, thing is. by the way a, f- a thing to let people know all the bollyhoos the superpowers are named after like uh tv terms yeah like, hold on 
like a direct to video makes one able like to look through like pictures and stuff or mm -hmm. Yosemite Sam's is like he can hit stuff let's see what his name was well we don't need to know exactly what the name yeah. is but yeah sorry you don't need so, to know exactly so that. they're, super, they're superpowers um, they go on to this mission they get uh, cornered by Bugs Bugs Bunny and right. um yeah that's that's basically it and then and then um I guess skipping forward a little bit after that fight they have um we get the plot of this the this, this series like the backstory of it and i'm going to be explaining this you can correct me if i'm wrong cuz it seems it was it was yeah, a week, a week and a half ago before uh, when i write this but i'm a little bit confused so basically in the beginning in this universe there's three there's three planets that you really that you keep in mind right so there's right. earth and earth is like earth 616 it's just normal earth and there's Toon world or whatever they call it, the world where all the, the cartoon characters live and they're like actually real. Right. So they all live there and Earth like watches the cartoon world through their televisions and they um and that that's how that works. And there's also Mars. And that's where the Martians live. And where a uh, a specific like why things turn into monsters comes from Mars. It, it comes from Mars, and the reason why it comes from Mars is because I think there's like a council of like stronger than average um, Bollyhoo users, and I'm guessing yeah, the, uh, that the, the more popular, the more popular the cartoon character is, the more powerful his power is. So it's like the council is populated by like people like um, SpongeBob, Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, people, the cartoon characters like that. And so I think Mickey Mouse is the one that figures out that they're getting their powers from Earth. So like the more people that are watching them, the more of this like power they get. And it's like it's almost like an energy that runs. It's like an electricity that runs their world. And then they also figured out that along with that power comes like another different power, like the like the yin to the yang of of that power. And I forgot what it was called. It's like anti who or something. Yeah, the anti. It's called anti who. And it's basically like a corrupting power. And Mickey Mouse, he wanted to figure out what this um anti who power is. And how it can be used. So he, so what he does is he does tests on his own world at first, and he figures out that it turns like people into or cartoon characters into monsters. So he's like, "Oh crap, this is not good." So instead of, so what he does is he like rewires the system so that when Earth watches Toonville, only the good power, the Bollyhoo power, is is transferred to that world, and then he sends all the the Antihoo power to Mars. And yeah. then the Martians don't like that because now they start turning into monsters and they're like, what the hell? So then they wage war with t the Toon World. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to be serious all this time, but now I'm, like, <laughs> I'm realizing what is so stupid it is. But yeah, they, they get onto their spaceships, they wage war with Toon World. And then they, um, I guess they sort of, they sort of end up in like a draw where everybody loses. Um, like the Martians lose a bunch of people and the Toon World lose a bunch of people. This is where like... This is where we find out the backstory of like Scoob and Shag. So Scooby is like, he's he's one of the leaders of the of the place because he's like so one of popular. the most powerful and everything. Yeah, he's one of the most powerful. And Shaggy died. Um, the original one, I mean. So the original oh, yeah. Shaggy died, and the Shaggy that was on that Toonville was a clone. Um, so the clone realizes that he was not like he was not the original. So he's like all having an existential crisis. And then um, what happens is they get invaded by the Martians, and then um, the gang, the mystery gang, gets sent. Um, they escape to Earth, I think. So they they crash land in Earth, and that Shaggy was like um, was I would call like old Shaggy, because yeah. what he so what he does is um, I'm pretty sure he's the one that's there. I'm pretty sure Velma erases all the memories of the gang. Yeah, Velma erases. Including including everyone. Scoob. Including Scoob and including the new Shag. Yes, there was a new Shag too. With like a new clone of Shag. But the old clone I think escapes. Somewhere. Yeah, the the old clone escapes and he goes and lives like a normal life. Mm -hmm. So the old clone escapes. Up until... And then there's a new clone with the gang. So now they're just on Earth and they're just doing the thing on Earth for a while. And that's where... Um, yeah, that's where that happens. The twist is that the Mickey that... Um, or one of the twists is that the Mickey Mouse that they met in the house, the new Shag and Scoob meet in the house, was actually old Shag. 
dressed up in a Mickey Mouse costume. Of a guy that he killed that was wearing a Mickey Mouse costume. Ah, okay, yeah. And this this old shag, I think his... I don't quite know what his motivations are. I guess it's like um, he wants to... He wants to... Oh, I get it now. He wants to get revenge on Martians. So he wants to help Mickey Mouse get the power... Harness the power of, like, both the Ballyhoo and Antihoo to, like, kill all the Martians or something. Yeah. At least that's what I've gotten from it. And now... No, that, that's, that's about right. Yeah, I, I'd say that's about right. And, um... Yeah, so that's that's what they're trying to do. So there's like the faction of Mickey Mouse plus Old Shag plus a bunch of other characters that are trying to finish the war with Mars. And the faction of like the new faction that's trying to stop them from waging this, continuing this war. And I guess the new faction kind of just wants to be peaceful on Earth or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at in the story right now. So there you go. That was the that was the rundown of it. It's um it's, that, it's yeah it's interesting and it's pretty good. Um, a lot better than I thought it was going to be when I first read it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's it. I would give it a um, eight out of ten. Yeah, it's, it's all right. All right, that's actually more than I was expecting you to give it. Yeah, I'm not a really strict guy. I mean, I, I enjoy a lot of different things, so it's okay. I liked it. Eight out of ten. What about you, James? What would you rate it? I would give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, huh? 9 out of 10. And that's because it really surprised me with like how in-depth mm. the story became. And just how much is here and like how much is like developed and stuff. It pulls it's kind just... of like a One Punch Man effect on you. Yeah. Where it's, like <laughs> at, where it's like for most of the time, the animation's like not very good. It might as well just be like trash. And then for like that... 10% of the time when there's like an action scene, it just like rockets up to like an, a 10 out of 10 animation. Right. And that's, that's exactly what happens with this. Yeah. It's, man, it's just so good to like look at and like watch and everything. Yeah. Watch. It was, um, it was okay. So if you're interested in watching, um, I guess uh, re- reading. reading or keeping up to date now from, from now on, you can go and, uh, watch that scoop and shag or read it. I guess read the Scoob and Shag comic. Um, this is probably the only review I'll do on it, um, it unless it, something crazy happens in the future. And James, like JD, you remember Scoob and Shag? We gotta watch that again. <laughs> you gotta read that again. Anyway, that's it then. Crap shoot yeah, review. Yeah, it's like, uh, and Shag. like another hundred chapters. <laughs> yeah, I give an eight out of ten. James gives out a nine out of ten. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want more reviews. Of just random stuff is you pretty much anything, I guess. Goodbye. Goodbye.